Good morning. Uh, hadn't decided on a topic yet. There's the Inner Human Project and there's the Tors, cr Towards Christ Experiment. You know, I haven't talked about it in those terms, so maybe I'll talk about the Towards Christ Experiment. Oh my gosh, am I really going to go into this? Okay, all right, all right, I will. Yes, yes, okay. All right, um, next year sometime, I think, unless, uh, <laughs> unless wisdom prevails and, or, uh, self, <laughs> self-preservation of some sort prevails, uh, I'm going to attempt to do something like an experimental church service to lead it, uh, online through a series of videos, um, for six months, so there will be something like, uh, 25 episodes um, and my intent is to with the Towards Christ ex uh, experiment is to invite people who are having difficulty with church um, or atheists that are curious about Christianity either way because what the towards Christ experiment is, is an experiment. It's, hey, let's try this. Um, it's not a denomination. I don't want it to become a denomination. If it becomes a denomination, I will feel as if I failed. Uh, or a non-denominational church or something. It's, it's an attitude, right? I, I, this is intended as a, a mezzanine between the various uh, factions of Christianity uh, and between those outside of Christianity even. This is intended to, as a way of getting to know Christ better. Uh, and there's at least two paths to that. I guess you could say three. So there's pairing away of various assumptions that are built into um uh, an authority figure of any authority structure in any Christian denomination or church. There's always an authority structure. And that's fine to a certain degree, but there are things that a authority structure begins to imply once it's formalized that I think begins to work against the figure of Christ because he is meant to be the authority. Um, so that's a pretty big challenge to most of Christianity, the vast, vast majority of Christianity. Um, I might even call it, say that what I'm aiming at is Christianity instead of Christianity. And I make that differentiation because the Towards Christ project or uh, uh, experiment is intended to, again, just aim at Christ. And minimally, minimally say what we think Christ is. So there's the teachings of the Bible. Uh, and there's ways of interpreting the Bible. Oh, jeez, okay. So the Bible would be um, taught... Oh, no, sorry. Um, the idea is to show that the Bible is not... Oh, gosh, how do I say this correctly? The Bible must be interpreted. Okay, so one thing I want to stand up against is fundamentalism. Uh, it's a very tempting uh, package because it teaches certainty. It teaches, hey, just follow us and we will tell you what to do. And in times of confusion where it's hard to tell what's happening in the world... Um, I mean, I think that's why the Catholic Church is growing so quickly. I mean, I've, I've known at least three families, uh, well, two families, I guess, three people, who have uh, began making movements towards uh, Catholicism. Uh, and that fascinates me. That really does. Uh, I really want to be able to chat with them more than I have. Uh, one of them, I don't think the conversation went the right way. Uh, I think I need to ask him different questions, because I was asking theological questions. And, okay, okay.
Okay, focus. Introducing the Towards Christ experiment. That's what I'm doing here. Um, so six months of messages, which uh, are going to attend, are intended, will be intended to wrap up following Christ as a series of practices and attitudes uh, with minimal theology. So the idea is not to get bogged down in what we think is happening. I, there's, a, there's a humility built in to this towards Christ experiment, uh, which is that we could be wrong. We don't know precisely what we're dealing with here. We have faith in it, though. You know, that's, that's the way I want to market it, if you will. Um, I'm not marketing this as this is, if you do these things or if you know these things, you've got it. You've arrived. Um, that, I think, is a kind of man-made certainty. It's not, I don't think it's God-made at all. I think it's man-made certainty. And it actually distracts from the real goal of faith. There's basically two faiths, right? There's this man-made certainty that, oh, now I have the correct theology and I know what's going on, therefore my faith is strong. And it's like, no, no, your trust is in your theology, not in God, when you do that. The trick, or the thing that I think, and I'm not saying everybody who has that kind of faith uh, that I just described doesn't trust God deeply. I'm saying it's uh, it's a distraction. Uh, the only way you may move forward in that is to move away from that certainty of your theology. And if you remain in the certainty of your theology, then your faith is weak. Your faith is weak because it's built on a human-developed and instituted and taught uh, knowledge of what we have decided God means in his book or what what is meant by God in fact. None of that is knowable. None of that is certain. It's our best bet in some cases. It's our best understanding but it's not it's not provable because only God could prove such a thing. What we are taught clearly in scripture is to trust in Jesus. That's what faith is about. It's putting your faith in him, not building a big theology that, oh, now all my questions are answered, uh, and now I can trust God. No, it's you trust God even if you can't put your finger in his bloody, bleeding side, right? Um, and yet God will do that sometimes. So that's kind of amazing too. Um, and maybe that's why there is theology. I don't know. Maybe God allowed enough it's speculation. Um, so, and the other thing about this project, and this is going to be the one that, if that didn't offend my Christian brothers and sisters, this one will. Uh, I am not going to say, so there's, there's, a, there's a, oh geez, there's an array of statements that uh, I am saying people should Oh, no, not an array of statements, sorry. Uh, there is an array of positions I will be taking through this project. Got one minute. Um, there is psychology, psychological theory, how the, the idea of Christianity might be something like a psychotechnology, that, that story we tell ourselves that allows us to correctly orient in the world to be as successful as a race and as good as a race as possible. Does that get fouled up? Yes. I just described one of the ways it gets fouled up by the certainty in the system instead of a certainty in God. Uh, symbolically. So Christ as a symbol, God as a symbol that lets us properly orient to the world. Um, so those are naturalistic, right? Um, I will try to be paring down Specifically, the things I think in Christianity that have gone wrong, like this false idea of faith and like um, fundamentalism. I have a huge problems with fundamentalism and I want to address those. Uh, not disrespectfully, I want to respect the fundamentals, fundamentalists, but I think they're making mistakes. Um, and I have a few more, but I got to get to work. So I'll conclude with a saying that 
the last step that I will be taking in this experiment is to ask if the individual going through this experiment wants to actuate these beliefs, these ideas, these symbols to the highest degree possible, which is to trust that they are in some way real, to fully trust that whether it's psychological or out there, doesn't matter, but you trust in it. You trust you trust in it with your whole heart and you let it guide you. Um, and if you want to move in beyond that and say, I do, I, I trust that it is real, you know, I guess that's the final stage. The, the stage before that is whether it's true or not, you trust in it and the final stage is I trust that it really is true. And that just enlivens it. Okay, I really have to get to work. I hope that's useful. Uh, thank you, bye.